Hello everyone, my name's Lost. Today we are going to talk about state machines. What is a state machine? So, it's a way to keep your code extremely organised and separate from each other. You might have a state for moving, you might have a state for attacking. So yeah, let's get an example on the go, ladies and gents. So, the first thing you want to do with a state machine is, in your room, you need to go into creation code. Okay, uh, we're going to say enum and then we'll just say player state, like that. So in this example, we'll have a couple of place, we'll have a couple of states, okay? So one state will be movement, and or in fact, we'll just say move, keep it short. Another state will be attack, and another state might be death. Okay, so our player has got three states, okay? So, what you would then do is in your object player, you would have a create event. In here, we're just going to name this var, shot for variables. And the only variable we need for this demonstration is state. And let's just say that the state starts off as uh, player state dot move. You know, you want to start off being able to move your character and stuff like that. So we then go to the step event and in here we'll just say state control, why not? And for this we're going to use what we call a switch. Now a switch is essentially very similar to an if statement but more optimized I guess. It's better, it's faster than uh, an if statement. So you're going to say switch and now we need to use what we call cases, okay? So let's say case um, player state dot move so a case just means that uh, our state variable equals player state move okay and then we'll say you know if that is the case then we'll create the script in a minute but we'll just say script player move okay and this is how you want to set it up and then you write break afterwards break just means stop Okay, it just, just kind of means stop as far as we're concerned. So let's create the first script. So you would then say, okay, well, let's just rename this to, what did I say? Uh, play a move, right? I think, that's, I think that's what I just called it. Yeah, well done. <laughs> so in here, you, you would then have your, you know, your movement code. It could be whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Uh, so you would then say, you know, so case play state dot attack, and then instead you're gonna then set up, uh, you know, your player attack like that, and we're gonna break. And yeah, let's just create that script. So let's just do this one actually, and. Yeah, we'll just rename it attack. So you would then have your, I don't know, attack code in here. And the way that you would sort of get to these, bet between these, you know, like obviously, in order to get to, this, to the attack state, you need to make that variable called attack state. So imagine in your movement code, right? Somewhere in here you have a check and you, you then say, you know, if distance to object, uh, you know, object enemy, uh, I don't know, he's less than 20, or whatever, 30. Then you would say state equals player state dot attack. And that's then how you change your state. So in this scenario, you're just going to have to imagine that you've right clicked an enemy, your character is walking to the enemy, you know, you're then less than 30 pixels away. And then we say, right, let's change to player state attack. And then in this attack, you then, you know, you're then like, well, okay, so attack code happens if we right click somewhere else <laughs> pro coding going on here ladies and gents uh, so if we right click somewhere else then you know you might go back to state equals uh, player state dots uh, move so you see how this kind of works ladies and gents I'm pointing at the screen like I'm you know making a point but you see you sort of see how this works 
so this is the alternative to having a situation where, I don't know, we're in object player. The, imagine this doesn't exist, this switch here. And then you say, right, so you, then you've got loads of if statements like if move stuff here. Uh, which can be really long. If death, you know, HP less than zero, could stuff goes here. If attack and all that stuff. Uh, if attack, blah, blah, blah. You know, if all that shit's going on, then... But the problem with this that you find frequently is that all of this shit is going off at the same time, so it's all checking at once. That is so unorganized, honestly, guys. For example, you know, you put something in here, in your move stuff, but for some reason, you know, your code's that convoluted and long and complex, it then starts affecting stuff in the attack if statement. Okay, and this happens to me, or oh, before I started using it, um, state machines regularly. So it all gets real convoluted and it's all making each other go wrong and stuff like that, where if you then split it up like this, you know, you then no longer have this situation. You're just then looking at one state at a time. So we say movement code, move code here. So like, you know, if up, if pressing up, go up and all that sort of stuff. But it's also saying, you know, if you then click an enemy and you're then close to it, change the state to attack. But if you just right click somewhere to move, then you know what, get out of the attack and we'll just ignore that and go back to the play state where we start moving again. You know, then obviously with the death one, you might just have, you know, case uh, player state dot death, in which case you might, you might then have a script called player death. Uh, and you might have some fancy animation going on here for a death, for a death scene. So then you would have, you know, uh, script player death, uh, death shit. So you might, you might just go, you know, all right, then we'll, if HP is less than zero, or less, or less than one actually, we'll just say if it's less than one, then state dot, uh, sorry, state equals player state uh, dot death. Yeah, that's right. Got really confused there for a moment. <laughs> don't know why. So yeah, and then you go into your death state, or your death script rather, death shit, and then you might just say, I don't know, instance destroy. I mean, typically you want. If you're gonna have a death state, then you might as well do some fighting stuff in here rather than this, rather than just this, because there's no point. But yeah, hopefully, guys, you you see what I'm saying here. Hopefully, that example that I just gave you made sense. Um, in fact, what I'll do, I'm gonna show you the current MOBA project that we've got going on because we're using state machines in there, and there's stuff going on. So let's. I'm just gonna open that now, and I'm gonna show you what's going on. So as you can see, guys, uh, in the room. We then have, we already have a Krish code, I've just got two, so I've, I've called it Worry State, because that's the first character that I've got. We have a Control State, which is just for all the controls, and a Q skill. Now, I'm creating a state for each different skill, because they're quite convoluted and complex. So, let's have a look. So, in the uh, player, yeah, Object Warrior. So, in the Step Event, we have the Switch States, as I showed you a moment ago. That's how it's all laid out. And then scripts, we have both the states listed here. So warrior control. This is where I've got all the movement code and the basic attacking code. In my case, the attacking code is simple enough that I didn't need to change it to another state. That's why it's just in here. But then as you can see, if we, if we then press Q, change the state. So then it goes to this state and then it ignores everything in here. It's no longer checking any of this stuff. So then it can focus solely on everything that is in here. Because we're then, we're then just in here, you see. It's then, the case is just then the Q skill. So then all it does is, and it's looking for all the stuff in here. You know, the code is irrelevant in, the, in this situation because, you know, you're not going to understand this because, you, you know, you, you, you need, you're going to have to watch the series to understand what's going on here. But yeah, they're state machines, guys. Uh, I'm going to show you just, just sort of what it does here. So yeah, as you can see, guys, currently we're in the control state because I can move and stuff. Uh, let's just get over here. So I'm just going to give you a demonstration of what we can do in the control state. So the control state is looking for movement and attacks. As you can see, it does all this stuff. But then when we press Q, all of that is ignored now. You see? And now it's just doing this event while ignoring all the other code. Oops, and that spazzed out something immense. <laughs> wow. Well... There you go, there's a bug I should probably fix for this series, which is totally irre irrelevant to this video, but... <laughs>
<laughs> there you go, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for watching. And yeah, I will see you next time. In fact, let's just see how spazzy this gets. Will they fix it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. All right, well, there you go, guys. Everything is spazzed out. It's not even looking for the death anymore because it's stuck in the... Uh, <laughs> it's stuck in the state. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time. Hey guys, Lost here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you're new and want more content like this, and please give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Catch you guys later.